Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So there's been a lot of talk in the PC community about what the Xbox One can do compared to a reasonably priced computer and to be honest I've been thinking the same thing. As most of you know I run with a Ryzen 3 1200 at 3.9GHz along with a 3GB GTX 1060 and for the past couple of weeks I've been thinking how does a build like this, which cost me roughly the same to put together as an Xbox One X, compare to the thing itself? And today, we're going to be checking out just that. So Microsoft's newest console features an 8-core CPU clocked at 2.3GHz, 12GB of GDDR5 and a 6 teraflop custom GPU. There's also 1TB of storage and a 4K Blu-ray player. The promoted USP is of course the 4K 60fps gaming aspect. That isn't the case for all games, and one that might not appeal to anyone who hasn't got a 4K TV, but thanks to super sampling, which is the act of taking the higher resolution image and scaling it down to your display's resolution, you'll see graphical improvements over the older One S or original Xbox One, even on 1080p or 720p screens. My Ryzen 3 PC features a 4-core 1200 at 3.9GHz, along with 8GB of DDR4 at 2400MHz and a 3GB 1060, which could already be seen as the limiting factor for high resolution gaming, but because I play at 1080p I decided I'd rather save the money and put it towards something else. Remember this PC wasn't built to take on the Xbox specifically, as it is my personal rig I've been working on for the past year or two. I just wanted to see how it performs in comparison. If we start with Assassin's Creed Origins, the Xbox One X version targets 30 frames per second with a resolution that fluctuates between 1700 and 2016p, according to a fascinating video I watched by Digital Foundry. Not quite native 4K, but it looks great, though personally I would have liked a more focused emphasis on 60fps. That's where my PC comes in. If I want 4K, I can set my game to exactly that, though as you can see my system can't quite handle Ultra HD, unless I turn things way down to low. Even then, we're not exceeding 30 frames per second. This is partly due to the game's poor PC optimization and insane CPU usage, not to mention the 3GB 1060 was never intended for this strain. If we scale the PC version down to say 1871p, a figure that sits between the common 1700 and 2016p range that the Xbox One X runs the game at, then we will see an improvement to a steady 35fps, though that is with medium settings. If like me, 1080p resolution is still your preferred native choice, then a system like this will let you turn things all the way up to ultra at 1080p for 40 FPS on average, which outperforms the Xbox frame rate wise, with the two looking very similar in terms of graphics at this resolution. When it comes to Rise of the Tomb Raider, the Xbox One X offers new in-game options that include native 4K, enriched visuals and a high frame rate mode. With enriched visuals, the game uses checkerboard rendering to maintain 30fps at 4K, while improving graphical quality on things like foliage detail and anti-aliasing. Native 4K just enhances the game's resolution and high frame rate mode allows the game to aim for 60fps at 1080p. I have no real way of measuring the FPS on the Xbox, but whilst it does target 60 FPS, there are some drops below that number, according once again to Digital Foundry's findings. The game feels very smooth, but thankfully my PC does a great job of keeping the game above 60 FPS most of the time, even at the highest preset. Unfortunately, when it comes to 4K, my system struggles. The opening scene runs at about 25 frames per second on high, and even at low, I couldn't maintain a solid 30. A similar story to before, with my PC running better than the Xbox at 1080p. Moving on to Forza 7, and this really is a fantastic looking title. The Xbox version runs at native 4K at 60fps, which is impressive, both technologically and graphically, especially considering it looks similar to the PC version at the highest settings. With my PC, the same can be said. 4K resolution is doable with a similar frame rate that does drop below 60fps at times, likely due to the 3 gigs of VRAM, but aside from that, it is a great overall experience. It's a similar story at 1080p with both running at 60 FPS. Finally, it's Call of Duty World War 2, a game that also benefits from a 4K and HDR enhancement on the Xbox One X. The game uses dynamic scaling which keeps the vertical resolution at 2160p, but the pixel count varies horizontally, allowing the game to achieve an almost constant 60fps at either 1080p or 4K. 
With native 4K on my Ryzen system, it will run quite comfortably at 40 FPS with the normal settings. I never really saw close to 60, but the experience is enjoyable and it's native Ultra HD with no compromises. At 1080p, the system will easily achieve 60 FPS plus at very high settings, which the Xbox version looks similar to. There will be a few stutters here and there though. Overall, the Xbox in my opinion is a good console, if you want a console. It will run 4K better than my machine, even if it isn't a complete no compromise experience. At 1080p, my Ryzen PC can easily keep up and exceed the Xbox performance wise, especially when it comes to those AAA games that are capped at 30 FPS for whatever reason. Let's not forget that with a PC, in-game settings can also be turned down for a smoother experience as games become more demanding, plus there are instant and varied upgrade options available. Little things like FOV sliders that often lack with console games are also a PC selling point for me. I don't know how long my system will be able to game at 1080p, but I do know that I have full control over when and how I upgrade it. I can see the appeal with the Xbox One X, don't get me wrong, especially with the list of enhanced titles quickly growing, and it'll be interesting to see how it holds up over the next few years with newer releases and compared to PC builds as well. If I was intending to build a PC to outperform this, then I might be able to do it with a very strong focus on used parts, so I'll just have to go out and see if that is possible to do. But for now, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video that took me ages to make. If you did, leave a like down below. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.